Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Polygon. Polygon and Matic, which is the native token of its proof of stake sidechain, find themselves in an interesting spot right now. So Polygon, if you're not familiar, is a project that's very much involved with Ethereum. They have different products that are part of the Polygon ecosystem. They have their proof of stake chain, which is what most people know. That's where Matic is the native token. They also have the ZK EVM, which is a layer two rollup built on top of Ethereum. And so they're very much connected to Ethereum, but in different ways. The ZK EVM is a direct layer two on top of Ethereum, whereas the proof of stake chain is really more of a side chain that's less directly involved with Ethereum. And the reason why this Ethereum connection is so interesting is that, of course, the news of the hour for crypto is the approval of the spot Ether ETFs. And this is something that is speculated to be very bullish for Ethereum that could, in the medium to longer term, really help Ethereum's price move higher. So the question is, can a project like Polygon that's so connected to Ethereum benefit from that? Basically try to ride Ethereum's coattails higher. And really the question is, can an asset like Matic, which is already at a pretty large market cap, 6.7 billion, have a good amount of upside it can realize and can it outrun some of the other layer two protocols that are out there think optimism arbitrum so on and so forth or will it struggle given that amount of competition there are literally hundreds of layer two protocols building on top of ethereum can polygon stand out so let's go ahead and talk about some data that can give us an idea of if matic is able to go on another big bull run or if things are looking worrisome for it in that longer term outlook. So when thinking about Matic's outlook, I think a relevant piece of data is its valuation relative to ETH. And the reason for that is basically if Matic can't outperform ETH, why wouldn't you just buy ETH? What's the point of buying Matic instead? So this is the Matic ETH valuation right here. So this is basically the value of Matic relative to Ethereum. So when you see this going up, that means that Matic is outperforming Ethereum you see this going down, it means that Ethereum is outperforming Matic. So we can see is that really in its entire history so far, Matic had been outperforming Ethereum, then kind of chopping around through most of its life, really up through February of 2023. But then it went on a massive bear market against Ethereum, where it really bled against Ethereum. And now is actually down about as low as it's ever been against Ethereum. So there are two ways that you can look at this. One is that this is a very bad sign. And then it might just be this new paradigm where Matic just continues to bleed against Ethereum. The alternative is that we've kind of finished the oscillation. We had this period of outperformance of Ethereum. We're now oscillating back in underperformance. And maybe we're due for another recursion back to the upside. You tend to see this with different assets when they're paired against, for example, Bitcoin or against Ethereum. You'll have ones that are either oscillators. They'll have periods of expansion against the asset and then contraction against the asset, and then they kind of just oscillate sideways through their history. Or you'll have the just total outperformers who go up and to the right only. Matic definitely doesn't seem to be in that category right now. Or you'll see the bleeders, the ones that just bleed out continually against the other asset. So far, Matic doesn't look like that. And so I think what we're really gonna have to wait and see is can it catch a bounce soon somewhere in these levels against Ethereum, or it does risk moving into more of that bleeder category which would be a pretty bleak outlook for it going forward. So I think it's a pretty important level here. I think Matic really needs to try to defend this level. And if it breaks down below it, I think that's not a great look for it. Anything can happen, but that would make its status as a potential oscillator around Ethereum a little bit more questionable, potentially. Okay, so that's how Matic is looking against Ethereum. I want to flip over now to some on-chain data about Matic that I think are going to be interesting to keep an eye on. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the realized price for Matic, the overall realized price. So what is realized price? Realized price is basically when you hold Matic and then you sell it, you spend it, you do it at some price level, but then someone bought that Matic from you. And so the idea with realized price is that when you spend Matic at some price level, someone acquired it for that price level and that becomes their cost basis. And so what you can really say about realized price is this the average cost basis of the network? That on average, where did people buy 
their Matic. And then you can tell, are they in profit on average? Are people on average in profit? And that's when price is above the realized price. Or when are people on average underwater in loss? And that's when it's below the realized price. So you'll see with Matic is that through much of its life, all the way up through here until we got to May 2022, on average, people were in profit. That across the network, holders of Matic were in profit. Then as we move down below, that's when that changed. And now on average, people are actually underwater. And really, we've just been oscillating around the realized price as we've gone through this entire time. Really, we're just oscillating. We're in profit on average. We're in loss on average, so on and so forth. Now, the reason why this is interesting and the fact that we're so close to realized price is that when you go and look at other assets that have done well, so for example, Ethereum here, this is Ethereum's realized price, you'll notice that points when price is below the realized price are kind of oscillating against like Ethereum did here, historically have actually been fantastic accumulation opportunities. Did it again, this cycle here, and for Bitcoin, you see the same thing. Every time price has gotten below the realized price, it's been a fantastic acquisition period for Bitcoin. So for Ethereum and for Bitcoin, that has been a strong buy signal. So it's going to be interesting to watch how this plays out for Matic. Will it be the same thing that when Matic is getting below its realized price, it likewise signals a massive buying opportunity? And that's really what we're going to want to watch. And in the future, it could be in two years, for example, we look back and just say, oh my goodness, what an obvious buy sign. Matic was down at its realized price. Obviously, that was a good value zone before it goes higher. But part of that is going to depend on the network. Can it continue growing, getting adoption, getting more demand? Because that's really what has characterized Ethereum and, of course, Bitcoin, that more adoption has happened, and so their value has grown. A lot of people talk about crypto assets as driving a lot of value from the network effects, how many people are using them. And, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum have very much had that happen. They have very much capitalized on their network effects. So can Matic do the same? And that's where looking at a metric like active addresses can be very useful. So this is the 24 hour active addresses is just basically how many addresses on, in this case, the Polygon proof of stake sidechain are active in a 24 hour period. And you can see some interesting things that have played out with this. So this is putting them on a log scale. And what you'll notice is that back here, before the big parabolic move that Matic put in in the last cycle in late 2020, starting in late 2020, you'll notice this interesting divergence where price was going sideways, but activity on the network was ticking up notably, and then price shot up, suggesting that more and more people were actually using the network, and then price ended up exploding with it. Now, interestingly, ever since that happened, you'll notice that on a 24-hour period, Matic has struggled to ever see network usage at this, like it was at this peak or at the top of this market cycle. In fact, it's only really ever been down from there. And the log scale is actually in some ways hiding the extremity of this. If we put it back on a linear scale, you'll see that we've gone back down to a level of activity on the network that is higher than back here, but not crazy much higher. We're really kind of back at these levels, these lows, not too much going on. So one of the things that Matic might really like to see on a fundamental level, and this is again, long thinking. So this is not just speculative bubbles or catching a bid in the middle of a hot bull market that could happen for whatever reason. But if you want to think that Matic is going to do something like Ethereum, for example, you'd like to see that you'd like to see a continuation of adoption and adoption is oftentimes signified by actual usage of the network. And right now we're still at a point where it's not broken out of this kind of range that it's found itself in. One sign of potential continuation in a thesis of continued adoption would be that for this to tick up again, more demand to come in and push it higher. Now, it is important to mention that Polygon is not just its side chain. It's not just Matic. It's not just the proof of stake side chain. It is a lot more than that. And so Polygon could be extremely successful and have Matic not do a whole lot. I think that's important because Matic in and of itself is not necessarily gonna track the overall success of Polygon, given all the other things that Polygon is working on with zero knowledge, with rollups, all of that kind of stuff, those layer twos, those are separate. And so that's where I think it's gonna be interesting about whether or not the side chain of Polygon really is gonna survive, 
or if the really the emphasis is going to move more into the layer twos and those could do phenomenally well while Matic maybe doesn't do so well so really it's going to be interesting to see if the side chain can catch more adoption because that's actually really what's needed for Matic to continue doing better otherwise why would you care about Matic if all you cared about are layer twos built on ethereum that use ethereum as their gas then what's the point of Matic? So that's something I think is going to be interesting to watch with Matic as it relates to how this cycle develops, especially if we get another bull run out of Ethereum, potentially because of the spot ETFs. Okay, so that is some on-chain data that I think gives some interesting insight into what's been going on with Matic and can help to explain why we haven't seen price move up to notably from here, that there hasn't been an explosion of demand and really narratively, Matic might not be super connected with all of the Ethereum layer two narratives that have been happening because it is somewhat distinct. But now let's take a step back from that and from the broader narratives and just look at the pure data. So that's what I want to talk about here. So this is some of our models that we have here on the channel, what they're seeing with Matic's price action, where they think things might be going. So this is our short term upside downside potential indicator I'm showing you here. So it's a risk model. Higher values are higher risk. Lower values are lower risk. And it cares what moves that play out over days to weeks, so shorter in its time horizon. And you see it does a fantastic job of identifying these low risk points and these high risk points for Matic. So more recently, what you'll see is that it's more or less been in a range, much like price. And when you've gotten to the higher points of this range, that is marked local tops, lower points have marked local bottoms. And so once again, we've got pretty low on the short term risk for Matic down to all the way down to negative 4.27. Actually the lowest level we've seen for Matic ever since right back here before the big explosion. So we've started to move back up. It's ticking up a little bit here, but it'll be interesting to see if this can mark that local bottom and if Matic can start rallying from here. And I think if Ethereum starts rallying based on, for example, the ETF narrative, then it would not be surprising at all to see Matic start to eat some of this realistic upside potential that it has in the short term. But the bigger question would be, can it break above these levels that have acted as resistance so far on risk and get up to some of these higher levels that might be more indicative of actually a bigger parabolic move? So we'll have to watch that closely, but certainly I think in the short term that is possible, especially if Ethereum starts showing some strength. Now, something else we can watch to get an idea of, should that be coming? Is there strength coming back into the Matic market? is the trend confidence indicator or TCI. So I've talked about this before. It's a trend model. It cares about what the trend is and as the name suggests. And really the way that I like to talk about it is how is the TCI moving in relation to price? If the TCI is moving up aggressively, then price often follows after. If the TCI moves down aggressively, then price often either corrects or at the very least just goes sideways. And you see that happening over and over and over again. So more recently, what we've seen is that we had this move up on the TCI, price then followed, TCI fell off a cliff, price followed. But now look at what the TCI is doing. It's moving up aggressively here. So that's another sign of potential strength entering into the Matic market that with all of this upside potential that's plausible in the shorter term, with the possible bullish catalyst from the ETH ETF, and given this, it would not surprise me at all for Matic to put in at least a shorter term move to the upside assuming that broader markets don't have some catastrophe happen or the stock markets sell off massively or something like that, that could derail it. So it might not happen immediately, but the signs are certainly hopeful. The conditions are hopeful in the short term and frankly better than they've been for a while for Matic, in my opinion, just looking at these data. Okay, so let's now talk a little bit about some longer term data when it comes to Matic and what we might be looking at. So this is our long-term upside downside potential indicator. So longer term risk, cares what moves to play out over months to multiple months. And you see a similar story to what we were just talking about. Long-term risk is the lowest it's been, or is just the lowest it's been ever since back here in December of 2020. Very low levels. So it would not be surprising at all for this to mark a local bottom and to have some rallying out of here. So the conditions, again, look promising for Matic. And it might not feel like it, right? Matic has done a whole lot of nothing for a long time. But at some point, especially if we're still in a bull market, I think that's going to change. And whether or not it's a multi-cycle change, like what we're just talking about, for example, like will it do something like Ethereum in the long term? That's irrelevant for this cycle. I think for this individual cycle, 
there will be a time when it rallies notably. Now, will that be to massively higher new all-time highs? We'll have to wait and see. I did a video a while ago on realistic price targets in a full bull market for Matic. I'll link to that in the description if you're interested. That gives some idea of what those price targets might be. But certainly, I think a rally out of here is very possible. Again, broader markets allowing. So not financial advice. You should make your own opinions. But that's something that I'm going to be watching closely. And if you want to see these data for yourself, watch these models for yourself, you can do so at our website, clarity.digital.io, link in the description. Okay, so the final model I wanted to talk about here was our momentum bias indicator. So this cares about momentum, as the name suggests, and it can give an interesting insight into where we are in the market cycle for an asset. So what you'll see on the MBI is different types of behavior. You'll have this clear bull market behavior where you're just in the green, everything's great, going to move up parabolically. But then you also have these periods of deep red bear market, things are terrible and not going to look great for a while. Those tend to show up and this is not just Matic, this is every asset you apply the MBI to, you will see that show up. But then what's interesting is these transition periods, these oscillations around zero here, which often can mark the transitions out of a bear market into a bull market. So here, this was kind of more or less the transition from this accumulation into a bull market, had the bull market, then we had this kind of chop around as we went into a bit of an uptrend, then we went to the bear market. And then we started this interesting kind of behavior on Matic where we store, sort of were transitioning into a, maybe a bull market. But then we've been interrupted by these brief bearish periods, these brief kind of mini bear markets that have shown up in these deep red. Same thing here, popping back up and then deep red again. And this is in some ways a little bit of a concerning sign for Matic. You really want to see this change. And what I would like to see is that if we get this rally, that might be coming, maybe it starts in the short term, but then transitions into a longer term rally to realize some of this longer term upside potential that Matic has. What I wanna see is a move back to something more like this, where you're spending much more time in the green than in the red, not this kind of just oscillation where you're going back into the red, or especially when you're diving deep into the red, that's not a good look. I like to see us get up high into the green and stay there for a while. So we'll have to wait and see if that happens. But so far, when you look at Matic, clearly it doesn't look like it's really entered into a bull market yet. Other assets like Solana and some others, when you look at the MBI for them, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum also even, they have been showing signs of bull market behavior on the MBI. Matic is just really not there yet. So the question then for Matic is, is it just going to be a slower mover, kind of like it was, for example, before last cycle, it took a long time for Matic to kick into gear. And a lot of people were probably really frustrated with Matic back over here, because frankly, it took a lot longer for it to kick off than a lot of other assets. But when it did, oh boy, did it kick off. So will that happen again? Is it just a massive accumulation phase that will eventually move into this very explosive bull market that may not be super long lived, but could take price massively higher with it? So we'll have to wait and see, but certainly we haven't seen that show up yet. Something I'll be watching. So to sum it all up then for Matic, I think when we just look at some of our models, the promise is certainly there. The possibility, the conditions of a nice move up certainly exist. But I think what we're gonna need to see is how well can Matic attach itself to the narratives that are really gonna drive the next phase of the bull market, assuming we don't get some catastrophe that derails everything. How well can it really attach itself to Ethereum and how well can Matic benefit from it? So Polygon could benefit from this separate of Matic benefiting. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. And can it reclaim some ground against Ethereum? Can it get some more interest, some more activity on the network that could signal some longer term health of the proof of stake chain? And can we start to realize some of that promise? So I think there's a lot of data to keep an eye on when it comes to Matic that can give us a really good idea of where it might be going next. So my overall conclusion is that there's a lot of hope, but we need to see it actually put its money where its mouth is. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. A lot of updates for our models and more over there. You can go to our website, PlarityDigital.io, to see live data for our models and more.